Welcome back, everyone, and prepare to be bedazzled, because today we're going to be shedding light on why McFarlane Toys should be granted the license to produce Marvel Legends action figures. So, why should McFarlane Toys take up the reins of the Marvel Legends action figure line? Lamentably, much of my dismay, much of my consternation, much of my chagrin, much of my agony, much of my grief, and much of my irritation, Hasbro has been churning out Marvel Legends action figures that are deemed to be vastly inferior relative to their older Toy Biz Marvel Legends counterparts. If you recollect, the Toy Biz Marvel Legends action figures retailed for $8 plus sales tax, and they trumped the Hasbro Marvel Legends action figures in every facet. In other words, relative to the Hasbro Marvel Legends action figures, the Toy Biz Marvel Legends action figures have superior sculpts, superior aesthetics, superior textures, superior shadings, superior details, superior accessories, and of course, superior build a figure pieces. It's quite a shame and quite a pity and quite direful to say the least that we're paying at least 350% the retail price of an $8 Cobus Marble Legends action figure for an action figure that is vastly inferior to an $8 Topaz Marvel Legends action figure. At the retail price of $28 plus sales tax, an action figure should eclipse an $8 Topaz Marvel Legends action figure, but that's not the case. The Hasbro Marvel Legends action figures are devoid of comic books. Their build-a-figure pieces feel scant and lackluster relative to the build-a-figure pieces that came bundled with the Topaz Marvel Legends action figures. The build-a-figures that came bundled with the Toby's Marvel Legends action figure waves were not only meticulously detailed and had superior sculpts, superior shadings, superior aesthetics, superior details, and superior articulation, but they also stood around 16 inches tall, which is a far cry from how tall the um, Hasbro Marvel Legends builder figures stand. I'm just content with paying a premium price for dainty, scrawny, gaunt, emaciated builder figures. I prefer for my builder figures to be burly, brawny, hefty, and sizable. So, the McFarland toys were to churn out Marvel Legends action figures. They would eclipse the Hasbro Marvel Legends action figures in Ophasis. They would be superior to the Hasbro Marvel Legends action figures in terms of their details, sculpts, shadings, textures, designs, accessories, and of course, build a figure pieces. They would also have weathering effects, highlights. Their details would more than likely be eminently accentuated, and of course, they would resemble their comic book counterparts. They would not be characterized by shoddy craftsmanship. They would not be subpar. They would not be lackluster. They would not be egregiously abysmal. Would they be paragons of resounding perfection? Possibly. Now, Marvel Select is another line that produces action figures of Marvel characters. However, the frequency of the releases is not high enough to be able to have thousands of action figures of Marvel characters. By the time Diamond Select Toys gets around to releasing over 100 new Marvel Select action figures, More than likely, decades would have already elapsed. McFarlane Toys, on the other end, would probably be keen on releasing at least 100 new Marvel Legends action figures, including variants, every one to two years if they possessed the license to produce Marvel Legends action figures. Hasbro's purview over the license, and they are inapt to relinquish it to McFarlane Toys. 
or contract with them to produce Marvel Legends action figures on their behalf. So it would be phenomenal if um, Diamond Select Toys could more frequently produce Marvel Select action figures of new characters. And it would be wonderful if McFarlane Toys could obtain the license to produce Marvel Legends action figures. However, it's quite tragic that this will more than likely never be the case. At least not any time in the imminent future. What about in the pending future or in the far future? Well, who knows? The future is enigmatic and obscure behind a penumbra of time. I also want to do wedge in a few more sentences for my closing thoughts. I overlooked mentioning that if Mark Barn and Toys took up the reins of the Marvel Legends action figure line, then um, the action figures would more than likely be subsumed under a one tenth action figure scale line in lieu of a one twelfth action figure scale line. So they would more than likely stand at least seven inches tall. And McFarland Toys would more than likely be able to lower the price point to hover around the $20 price point. You may make the contention that it is far more expensive to um, buy a $20 plus sales tax action figure turned out by McFarland Toys than it otherwise would be to buy an $8 action figure produced by Toy Biz. Even though that is a case, McFarland Toys produces extraordinary, meritorious, high-quality, worthwhile action figures. Is the Marvel Legends action figure line the quintessential action figure line to collect? Lamentably, it is woefully painful to say this, but at this juncture, it is not. When Toy Biz became defunct, the Marvel Legends action figure line became all the less enticing to collect. When you buy a Hasbro action figure, you are paying top dollar for a hunk of plastic. Will it be able to assuage your expectations? I'm under the axiom that it will not if you're accustomed to buying a high quality $8 Toy Biz Marvel Legends action figure that eminently exceeded your minimum expectations. So I hope that you found this video to be insightful and enthralling. I hope that you were regaled and bedazzled. Have a blissful day. Goodbye.